Item number SCP-3325 Index Live Entertainment Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-3325 is contained on site, surrounded by the existing perimeter fence, and guarded by a team of no fewer than four security personnel. As the structure exists in a remote location, no additional security measures are necessary. Specimens of SCP-3325-1 are contained in large animal containment cells at research sector. Each cell is outfitted with an audio recording device. Instances are fed twice daily with raw meat. All instances are hostile and must be tranquilized if direct interaction is necessary. Resources have been allocated and personnel assigned to facilitate the identification and retrieval of all subjects involved with SCP-3325. Efforts to locate the equipment and documents associated with SCP-3325-1 production are ongoing. Description SCP-3325 is an abandoned facility associated with Real Characters Industries, located in Redacted. The site consists of a recording studio, several subterranean laboratories, living quarters, storerooms, an incinerator, and containment areas. The administrative sections of the structure are located on the first floor, above ground level, with a helipad present on the roof. The recording studio is located on the ground floor. Below ground level are three floors containing laboratories, research facilities, and containment areas. SCP-3325-1 instances are biologically engineered organisms resembling puppets or costumed subjects, designed with the intention of being featured in children's television programs. Most of the organisms bear a resemblance to characters from existing children's television shows. SCP-3325-1 are hostile and aggressive to humans and other unrelated organisms. SCP-3325-1 lack nociception and will continue to pursue a target even if severely injured. However, these organisms are not anomalously durable and can be terminated with conventional firearms. SCP-3325-1 are carnivorous, with no preference for any particular meat. The intelligence of SCP-3325-1 varies with the extent unknown. Instances do not possess reproductive organs and the method by which these organisms were produced has not been identified. The behavior of these organisms is mostly unpredictable, with instances in containment observed to either stare at personnel for long periods or randomly exhibit heightened aggression. Instances are able to vocalize certain phrases at random intervals, although no actual ability to comprehend spoken language is evident. This process is facilitated through engineering of the larynx, vocal tract, and jaw muscles. Documentation of SCP-3325-1 vocabulary is ongoing. Note. These phrases were most likely intended to be lines for children's television programs. Personnel report the voices of SCP-3325-1 to be unsettling and disturbing, but otherwise harmless. A list of known SCP-3325-1 types are listed in the document below. Access Observation Log 3325-1 Object Designation SCP-3325-1-A Description Long-necked avian organism with feathers 3 meters tall. Its wings are redundant, unable to facilitate flight. Instances are able to reach a speed of approximately 72 kilometers per hour. Notes. Aggressive behavior patterns are similar to that of a cassowary. Cassuarius, cassuarius. Instance frequently damages its beak by running into objects. Color varies. Object designation. SCP-3325-1-B. Description. Bipedal reptilian organism. Notes. Observed in colors of purple, green, and yellow. Object designation SCP-3325-1 C Description Bipedal organism covered in fur, one meter tall, able to sprint at speeds of around 60 kilometers per hour. Notes Observed to attack in packs. Upon acquiring a target, an instance will vocalize a random phrase, which elicits aggressive behavior in other nearby instances. Color varies. Object designation SCP-3325-1-D 
Description. Unknown organisms that hide in vents. Object is able to secrete and project a corrosive fluid. Notes. Appearance of the organism is unknown. Specimens have yet to be obtained. Object designation. SCP-3325-1-E. Description. Bipedal reptilian organism, 5 meters tall. Notes. Constantly sings in a distorted voice. The lyrics of its song are unintelligible, presumably due to malformed vocal cords. Only one instance has been encountered. Object designation. SCP-3325-1-H. Description. Disfigured versions of SCP-3325-1 instances associated with necrosis, missing skin, exposed organs, tumors, additional limbs and or organs, or general deformations. Appearances of these objects vary. Notes. Ordinarily, organisms suffering from such extensive defects would expire shortly after birth. SCP-3325 came to the attention of the Foundation when the local authorities received a video transmission from an unidentified individual requesting help. The subject provided the location of the facility and reported a crisis of unknown nature. Additionally, the video listed in Video Log 3325-1 was sent. Agents confiscated the video recording and administered appropriate amnestic treatment to witnesses. SCP-3325 was subsequently located and investigated, confirming the anomalous nature of the organisms within the facility. At the time of discovery, SCP-3325-1 instances were roaming freely around the underground floors of the facility. All personnel on site were found to be terminated or missing. The office of the site manager was emptied and sterilized of all fingerprints and evidence. Attempts to contact or locate the President of the Corporation have been met with failure. All instances of SCP-3325-1 encountered on site were terminated or captured, with the exception of SCP-3325-1-D instances, which remain in the ventilation system of SCP-3325. Investigations of the Subterranean Laboratories Located on floors LG2 and 3, revealed underdeveloped specimens of SCP-3325-1 contained in tubular glass containers one meter in diameter and suspended in amniotic fluid. A number of tubes were affixed to the specimens to provide nutrients, oxygen, and for the removal of waste material. Slots for unidentified devices were also present on the containers, with the devices missing. Containment areas located on floor LG-1, consist of pens, cages, and chambers constructed of bulletproof resistant glass. Pens containing carcasses of cows, chickens, and goats were also discovered. The additional subterranean floors, indicated to be restricted to higher level personnel, consist of a conference room, several laboratories, research facilities, and a storage area. Refer to Addendum 3325-4. No further information could be obtained from the site, as most of the documentation, reports, and equipment were missing or destroyed, except instances that were intentionally hidden. Addendum 3325-1 The following text was discovered on a brochure on site, appearing to detail the goal of the organization. The back of the document displays two paragraphs. One depicts a child crying in the presence of a poorly constructed puppet. The second photograph depicts the same child smiling and clapping his hands at an instance of SCP-3325-B1. In today's world, children are bored of animation, puppets, costumes, and even the once groundbreaking computer-generated graphics. They've seen it all. They know it's all fake. Children nowadays want more, but what is the next step in the entertainment industry? Think outside the box. We're not talking about puppets or any of those materials children know are fake. We, as humans, inherently need to associate with living, breathing creatures, not puppets or moving pictures. We're talking about real characters. Our goal is to provide children with characters that are alive, that will teach them how to manage their emotions and solve life problems realistically. You can't get more real than that. Addendum 3325-2A. The following video recording was recovered from the facility with the cassette wedged behind a prop. The text, We Shouldn't Have Played God, is written over the casing. 
Access video log 3325-1. Begin log. An unidentified female human and an instance of SCP-3325-1A are visible. At least two male human subjects are also present, as well as other unidentified personnel. Male one. All right, demo scene one. Ready? Action. Female. Hello, hold on. It's staring at me funny. Tart, is that a problem? Male two. Not at all. It's just confused because it hasn't been given any commands yet. It has a very limited intelligence. Just say your lines. I'll give it the cue. All right, then. Action. SCP-3325-1B. I've flown back since winter is over. The instance is observed to speak in a distorted voice. Cut. Hey, it wasn't supposed to speak yet. Sorry, this one's new. We didn't have a lot of time to train it. Well, get it right this time. Action. Hello, Mr. Beaky. What brings you? I'm sorry, but I don't like the feel of this. What's it doing? Ow! The instance of SCP-3325-1 proceeds to bite the subject's arm. It's all right. No, stop, stop. Subject walks on screen to address the instance. Instance appears to bite the subject with increased pressure. Female subject attempts to struggle against it. It's biting me. Do something, damn it. Cut. Turn the camera off. Let go. Let go. Subject begins beating the instance with a baton. Use a dart. It's hurting me. The subject screams as blood trails down her arm. Security! Security! Hey, I told you to turn it off. A security team enters the room as the recording is terminated. End log. Addendum 3325-2B. The following video footage was found hidden in the security room among an officer's personal belongings. All other surveillance footage was corrupted and is believed to have been erased intentionally. Access video log 3325-2. Begin log. Two unidentified subjects, appearing to be guards, are observed on a catwalk. The subjects are armed with long poles with devices attached at the end, assumed to be tasers. Pens containing instances of SCP-3325-1 are observed below them. Guard 1. I feel like shocking these guys for fun. They don't do shit. Guard 2. Well, they stink and are fucking creepy, that's for sure. Can't believe children are supposed to watch this. Yeah, especially when they talk. It's nightmare fuel. Hey, look at that one. Just staring dead ahead. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Laughs. Say nothing. They're probably brain dead. I heard they only last for a week or something like that before they start melting. Seriously? Yeah. It's messed up. Last week I saw one. Hey, look, that one's staring at you. Laughs and points at an instance of SCP-3325-1B. Oh, shit, you're right. Shit, that's uncomfortable. Hey, mind your own fucking business, you creep. Ignore it. It's brain dead, remember? I don't like it. It's really creepy. Hey, you know what? I bet I can knock its hat off. Grow up, man. Watch this. I'll just get it back with a stick later. Hey, what the fucker? Subject retrieves an empty bottle and throws it at the instance of SCP-3325-1B. The bottle strikes the hat of the instance and causes it to rupture and bleed. The structure is discovered to be organic in nature and an extension of the organism. Oh, shit. Damn, that was part of its body? No wonder it never falls off. What are you going to do? Shit, uh, I'll just tell him it fell over and hurt itself. 
it's not going to last long anyway. Crap. Security camera. Subject points at the camera. Yeah, fuck. How could I forget about that? Shut up. I think it records audio as well. All right, it's okay. I think Danny is handling the security room. He's cool with me. I'll just tell him to erase this or something. Hey, Danny, can you hear me? Camera sways up and down. See? Told you it's cool. Just act like nothing happened. Grow the fuck up, man. You're lucky I found you this job. Don't screw up. End log. Addendum 3325-3. The following selected audio logs, produced by an unidentified individual, were recovered from floor LG3. The recordings were found in a janitor's closet, hidden among cleaning supplies. The subject is assumed to be a researcher. Access audio log 3325-1. Researcher. Is a genius. We can train the subjects to speak certain phrases by adjusting their vocal cords and related structures to allow for speech. All those long, sleepless nights have paid off. Subject 188 spoke a sentence today. It isn't perfect, I'll admit, but we'll get there someday. Now, we still have to address their intelligence, because some of the subjects lack even the most basic of self-preservation instincts. They won't even eat or drink, and have to be fed through tubes to be kept alive. Those ones will have to be incinerated. The applications for these subjects are endless. Children's television shows are just the tip of the iceberg. In 50 years, we may be seeing petting zoos, live performances, appearances at events. We may even succeed in creating subjects that are suitable to be kept as pets. Who knows? Yawns. Well, today had a surprise in store for me. The site manager just contacted me to tell me that... Quit. For whatever reason, I've been promoted to lead the project. Someone's going to be in deep shit if another subject attacks another actor. Their neurological structure must be inherently unstable. I simply don't have the qualifications to address that. I'm going to request for another recruitment drive. This time for neurologists. God, that would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. This technology is still in its infancy. We can't predict the outcome with sufficient accuracy to produce consistent results. In the meantime, I'm suggesting that we fit the subjects with shock collars, at least until we can control their aggressive behavior. Yawns. This is test number 31 to determine the cause of cell lysis. The cells keep destabilizing, the structure is sound, and all the components should fit together nicely. I've got to find a way to keep them stable. Last week, one of the characters melted during shooting. Director was seriously pissed, saying we can't have that happen again. We'll be ruined if children are traumatized, seeing their favorite characters melting in front of them. Producing additional subjects to replace the ones that melt is a huge hassle, so we've got to find a way to stabilize them. Just getting them in the right shape is a tedious process. The research and development team are working hard on this. The sound of glass being slammed repeatedly is heard. Subject 200 is extremely hostile, but it lasted almost two weeks without experiencing critical cellular breakdown. This is much longer than any of the other subjects engineered. Due to the combination of cells utilized, the subject is able to produce a highly corrosive acid, ultimately an undesired side effect. Cell structure and genome have been recorded, and the subject is to be terminated for its aggressive behavior. Future experiments will be conducted to determine methods to reduce aggression in the subjects. We conducted test 203-3 today by putting a trash can into its containment chamber. The thing immediately climbed in. I'd say the behavior manipulation and shaping process is coming along quite well, thanks to the new researchers we've acquired. Unidentified subject. Looks like a chthonic nightmare. Yes, it looks like a chthonic nightmare. We're still experimenting with stabilizing the cells, and are not concerned with looks for the moment.
Subject 203 escaped today after it attacked two guards. It crawled into the vents. Security killed it in the end. The subjects are getting more and more aggressive. If this behavior continues and can't be addressed, I may quit as well. It isn't worth it. Maybe we're meddling with something we should have left well enough alone. We have to start addressing this aggressive behavior. The subjects are exhibiting what appears to be a primitive form of intelligence. Previously, they were content with just sitting around, doing nothing. That was a problem in itself, as they were a waste of resources and couldn't be trained. These ones appear to be able to communicate, although I can't determine what the medium is. Furthermore, they've developed some kind of a hierarchy. Further study is required. Otherwise, we might as well terminate this batch. This level of intelligence is not necessary. God damn it. None of the higher-ups are taking me seriously. It's not just me. It's the other researchers as well. What are they thinking? Where do they think they are directing our research? I can understand that we were supposed to stabilize these things to stop them from fucking melting on screen, but they're becoming more dangerous. I think something is going on here. I don't think it's about that kid's show. Maybe it was at first, but now I'm not so sure. There's that floor for level 4 personnel. It's at the far end of LG3, accessible from a separate elevator. I'm getting suspicious about it. None of the other researchers know what's down there, and we're the ones keeping this project alive. If it's not used for research, then what are they doing down there? It's the guys in suits. The men in black, as we call them. They are directed down there by the administrator's spokesman. They stay down there for a few hours, then leave. They're hiding something from us. But what? Subject is heard whispering. I've decided to keep my thoughts to myself. Some of the other researchers voiced out their concerns, and they were let go. I'm not buying into that. Maybe I'm just being paranoid. The sound of an alarm is audible. Shit. That's a security breach. Something's gone wrong. The escaped subjects were caught and incinerated. Security footage revealed the problem. They tricked the guards watching them. They played dead so the guards would go in to retrieve their carcasses for incineration. That's when they struck. Now we have a guy dead and another with severe injuries. How the fuck did this behavior develop? How could we have not observed this level of intelligence in previous tests? These things are dangerous. They are not suitable for any children's show. Not unless we can control them. All right. Today I'll be discussing methods for curtailing the aggressive behavior of the subjects with our team of neurologists. Recently, we've... The sound of an alarm is audible. What the hell is that? Oh, shit. That's a major security breach. All personnel remain calm and evacuate the... Whispering, they've rounded up the researchers. I slipped away and called for help. This was no accident. This breach was planned. All fucking subjects were released at once. The subject is heard breathing heavily. I don't know how much time I have left. I should have seen it sooner. More and more researchers were disappearing. They knew too much, and I'm next. Listen, you can't let them do this. There were these people over at the facility. Guys in suits. The subjects were ignoring them. This is a conspiracy. Those times they came over, I think they were discussing. The subject stops talking for three seconds. Faint footsteps are audible. The audio is muffled. The subject is assumed to have hidden the recording device. Whispering, Oh, God! Please, oh, God! A door being forced open is audible. No, please, don't! Screaming. Four gunshots are audible. Unidentified subject one, R-36, has been terminated. That's all of them. Dispose of him, along with the others. 
unidentified subject to... Roger. Let's get what we came here for and get out. The bastard called someone, so we don't have much time. Footsteps are audible. The recording continues, but contains silence for 37 minutes before ending. Addendum 3325-4 Agents discovered 79 steel containers in a storage area on the bottom floor of SCP-3325, restricted to most personnel. 41 containers contained human cadavers and were filled with a formaldehyde solution. Documents indicating the cause of death are attached to each container. A list of selected documents are included below. Access document 3325-1. Complete list available on request. Subject. Female. Position. Actor A2-11. Cause of death. Subject 66. Mauling. Time of death. 2001. Subject. Male. Position. Trainer T29. Cause of death. Subject 102. Mauling. Time of death. 2001. Subject. Male. Position. Head researcher. Biochemist R35. Cause of death. Scheduled termination. Time of death. 2002. Subject. Female. Position. Researcher. Neurosurgeon. R3-11. Cause of death. Scheduled termination. Time of death. 2002. Subject. Male. Position. Researcher. Neurologist. R3-18. Cause of death. Subject 109. Organ failure. Time of death. 2002. Subject. Male. Position. Trainer. T2-13. Cause of death. Subject 115. Necrosis. Time of death. 2002. Subject. Male. Position. Guard. G2-15. Cause of death. Subject 215. Mauling. Time of death. 2002. Subject. Male. Position. Actor. A2-20. Cause of death. Scheduled termination. Time of death, 2002.